Okay, in this video I'm going to do a quick explanation of Dijkstra's algorithm. Uh, Dijkstra was a Dutch uh, a computer scientist, so hopefully, I know I'm not pronouncing the name exactly correctly, but hopefully it's close enough. What we're going to do is we're going to find least cost paths in a given graph. So, uh, you can think about these graphs again, you know, maybe there's a cost in shipping goods from one point to another. And I'm probably going to talk about it in terms of distances, just because that's the way I've thought about it. So instead of saying cost, I'm just going to use distance. But what we'll do is we'll start with some vertex, and I'm going to start with vertex A, and I'm going to figure out the cheapest or the shortest route, the shortest distance to get from vertex A to vertex H. So we have all these distances between our different vertices. We've got vertices A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. So the numbers along the edges are the, the distances between those vertices. So again, I want to find the shortest path to get from vertex A to vertex H. And again, I'm just going to run through really quickly how this algorithm works. So originally Dijkstra put, so okay, so we're going to label little distances from vertices to other vertices along these paths. So starting at vertex A, I'm going to label above that a distance of zero since that's the starting point. So Dijkstra put infinities initially above all the other points, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, all those other vertices. I'm just going to leave them blank. So what we do is we start with some vertex. We start with our initial one. So I'm going to kind of shade it a little bit green to say, hey, that's where we're starting. And then what we do is we start at that vertex and we look at the distance to all of the adjacent vertices. So the distance from vertex A to vertex B, that's going to be a distance of 3. So above vertex B, I'm going to just write the number 3. And let me try to shade that in a little darker. I'm using a pencil for once because I'm going to be erasing things. So that's got a value of 3. The distance from A to C, well, that's a distance of 4. So I'm going to put the number 4 in front above the, uh, the vertex C. And then from the vertex A to the vertex D, that has a distance of 7. So I'm going to put a 7 above the vertex D. So we've now traveled from vertex A to all of the vertices that are adjacent to it. So we're now done with that one. So I'm going to kind of just go back and cover, color it a little bit red just to remind myself that we've, we've done that one. So what I'm going to do next is, okay, so I've got these, these vertices. I've got three vertices in this, this case. I'm going to go to the one that has the, the minimum value. So we said the value above B is 3, above C is 4, above D is 7. So I'm going to start with vertex B. And now what I do is I, I play the same game. I travel to the adjacent vertices. I'm not going to backtrack in this case. We don't need to do that. So, okay, so now we're working with vertex B. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take this value that's above it, which in this case is 3, we're going to add that to the length along each path. And so let's look from B to C. So notice uh, if we take the original value of 3 plus 1, that's going to give us a value of 4. And since if, if the value you get is smaller th than the original value, you change it to the smaller value. Because again, that's going to indicate that you found a smaller path. So if we go from A to B and then to C, well, 3 plus 1 is going to be 4, so we don't have to change this value because, well, 4 is the same as 4. Let's look as well. So if we go from B to F, so the, the value above vertex B is 3. If we took 3 plus 5, that's going to give us 8. We don't have a value labeled for vertex F, so above that we're going to label that with a value of 8. Again, indicating that so far we found a path of distance 8 units that will give us to vertex F. Okay, so now I've taken care of vertex B. Let's look at vertex C next. So this, okay, maybe this one will be a little more interesting. So from vertex C to vertex D, well, the value above C, the value above vertex C has a value of 4, again, indicating that we found a path of length 4 to our vertex C. Well, 4 plus 2 is going to be 6 if we travel to vertex D. Well, 6 is smaller than the original value, path, the original path length we found of 7. So now I'm going to update this. Instead of uh, putting a, the, the number 7 above the vertex D, I'm going to label that with a, a value of 6. Indicating, again, we found a shorter path length, because now I've gone from A to C to D. That's going to be a little bit shorter. Let's see, the other vertex we need to check, if we go from vertex C to vertex F, 
Well, let's see, the value above C is 4, the path length is 6, 4 plus 6 is going to be 10. Well, we've already found a path length of 8, so we're going to keep that original path length of 8 to vertex F. So I'm not going to update the value above vertex F. So I forgot to put my, my green that we were using that one, and now we are now finished with vertex C. And we're, again, going to just do this. So again, we're trying to find the shortest length, shortest length from vertex A to vertex H. That was our start and our finish. So let's just keep going here. We'll go a little bit faster. So let's work with vertex D. Okay, so from vertex D, if we go from vertex D to vertex G, so the, we found a path length of 6 to vertex D. The path length from D to G is another 6. Well, 6 plus 6 is 12, so I'm going to put a 12 above G. Likewise, we can travel in my graph from uh, the vertex D to the vertex E. Uh, we knew there was a path length of 6. The new path has a length of 3, so 6 plus, plus 3 is going to give us a length of 9. So that's the value I'm going to give above, above ver vertex E. I'm having a hard time talking here. So let's see. We've now taken care of vertex D. And again, let's just keep doing this. So I'm looking at the, the, the vertex with the smallest number above it. We've got 8, 9, and 12. So let's travel to vertex F. So from vertex F, so now we're working on vertex F. To go from vertex F to E, well, that would be a path length of 8 plus a new path length of 1. Okay, so again, that's going to tie and keep us at a path length of 9. And then if we look from, we can also travel from vertex F to vertex H. So we had a path length of 8. This new path has a length of 8 as well. So if we travel from, from F to H, it says we've now found a path length of 16. And again, I've now taken care of vertex F, so we're done with that one. Let's see, so we've only got two vertices left. We've got E and G. So let's look at vertex E. So that's the one we're now working on. So if we travel from E to vertex G, well, 9 plus 3, that's going to be the same path length of 12. And now we've also got from, we knew that there was a path length of 9 to vertex E. Notice if we travel along this direct path from vertex E to vertex H, well, we, we knew there was a path length of 9. This path has a length of 4. 9 plus 4 is going to give us a path length of 13. So we've now found a new shorter route. So let's update that value. So we found this new shorter route to be a path length of 13. And now we've taken care of vertex E. And last but not least, let's look at vertex G. Well, the only thing left to check is from G to H. We knew there was a path length of 12. We'll add to that a path length of 2. That's going to give us a total path length of 14, which is greater than the original path length we found of 13. So we've now checked vertex G as well, which means we found our shortest path length of 13. So we know that there is a path of length 13 units that goes from our original vertex A to our stopping vertex H. So that's all there is to it. You just are just basically updating path links as you go on. There's a lot of terminology involved with some of this stuff. You know, I'm sure if you're taking this, you're probably in a discrete math class, probably more likely in a computer science class. Um, you know, go check on Wikipedia, for example. There's a lot of the terminology you may need. But this is just the, the basic idea of how the algorithm works.